Now NASA management makes a daring change. The next flight, Apollo 8, will go all the way around the moon. My initial belief was this was absolutely crazy. But I realized that risk had to be taken if we were to achieve Kennedy's goal of landing on the moon within the decade. It will be the ultimate test for the mathematicians in the trench, navigating a spacecraft toward a moving target a quarter million miles away. We were used to just going around the planet, and uh, this was the first time that we were going to take people and send them to a destination. Apollo 8 will also be the first time men ride the giant Saturn V moon rocket. That was going to be the long pole in the tent. That big Hummer that had to get us out of the atmosphere, uh, everybody knew that that one was going to have to be done right. It overpowered you. To me, this was the greatest uh, miracle of technology associated with the entire Apollo program. Taller than a 30-story building, the Saturn V weighs six million pounds. Just handling it takes a collection of huge, complex devices, each a marvel of engineering. To move it, a self-propelled platform bigger than a baseball diamond. To service it, a tower taller than the UN building in New York. Nine movable swing arms carry it electricity and fuel. Each weighs 30 tons. Underneath it, a flame deflector, taller than a six-story building, will keep the exhaust from bouncing back. Without it, the rocket would destroy itself. Hold-down arms keep it bolted to the pad until the engines reach full power. They must all release within 30 milliseconds of each other, or the rocket will tip over as it starts to move. By December 1968, the rocket is ready. Apollo 8 astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders are about to become the first humans to head for another planet. Gene Krantz can only watch. He's training for the next flight. I was sitting out Apollo 8, and this is probably one of the, uh, the times in my life when I really appreciated being in the sideline during the course of the mission because I had the ability to feel every emotion. I didn't have to suppress it like the guys on the console. 20 seconds and come on us, 15 seconds. December 21st, internal. at 6.51 a.m., the beast comes to life. Except for a nuclear bomb, the noise of the Saturn V is the loudest man-made sound on Earth. The hold down arms release, and six million pounds of rocket begins rising. Every controller held their breath because we want that guy to fly. Two hours, 50 minutes after launch, translunar injection, TLI. All right, you are go for TLI. For the first time, humans will leave the gravity of the Earth and head for deep space. Ignition, roger ignition. I had this visceral feeling that we have left Earth orbit going to a place that a human had never been before. Apollo 8, Houston, you're looking good here, right down the center line. Roger, Apollo 8. We see the trajectory path change from basically going around the Earth now to forming a figure eight type maneuver. We're outward bound to the moon. We'd, never, we'd seen it only in training before. I'd never seen it for real, nor had any controller. Safe journey, guys. Now physics takes over. The spacecraft is coasting, the moon advancing. In two days, their paths will intersect. Then, another new unknown, 
lunar orbit insertion. If the LOI engine burn isn't just right, Apollo 8 could spin out into the solar system or crash into the moon. As we approach the moon, you know, everybody's anxiety, uh, you know, started raising because we knew that we were about to do something that was irreversible. We're just sitting there waiting. It's like waiting for a funeral to start. You have one engine that has to work perfectly. And if that engine doesn't work, you're not going into orbit around the moon, or if you're in orbit around the moon, you're not coming back home. The engine burn will happen behind the moon, out of radio contact. Until Apollo 8 reappears, no one on Earth will know if the trenches' equations are right. Christmas Eve, 1968. Astronauts Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders in Apollo 8 have just disappeared behind the moon. While they're on the other side, they'll perform a critical engine burn. The trench has calculated the exact instant Apollo 8 should reappear. If the engine burn was successful, then they'd come around at this time and we'd see them. And if they didn't do the maneuver, then they would be early. We've heard nothing yet, but uh, we're standing by. To the second we saw that clock at zero, we heard the call, and we knew the crew had performed the perfect maneuver. We were now in orbit around the moon. To Apollo uh, 8 now in lunar orbit. Uh, there's a cheer in the, this room. For the first time, humans have arrived only 60 miles from another planet. I think the best way to describe this area is a vastness of black and white. Absolutely no color. Then the crew and everyone watching on Earth sees something else. That was indescribable. If you didn't experience that, you've missed something. You see it now, and you can make up that picture on any computer, but that was real, and it meant a lot to me, and it meant a lot, I think, to every human being on Earth that saw it. And then they did the unbelievable. I just couldn't believe it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. They started reading from the book of Genesis. And this was on Christmas Eve. And the earth was without form and void. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. This was a surprise. Everything else had been pre-planned. And I was crying, it was so beautiful. And, and right now, this time, I really find it hard to suppress, you know, the emotion of that instant. It's real for everybody who was there, who lived it. Waters call these seas. God saw that it was good. And from the crew of Apollo 8, we close with good night, Good luck, a Merry Christmas, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth. And to hear that coming from Americans circling the moon on Christmas Eve, very emotional moment, very proud moment. Apollo 8 is a turning point in history giving humankind its first look at our home as it really is. <laughs>